the, the dominant topic of your scholarly work is ancient literature, but you have also studied and written about comparative and contemporary world literature, as well as about culture in general. What is it you start from when you analyze literary work and cultural historical phenomena? How do you decide on a topic to study and write about? Well, um, th there's, there's a, a, a kind of circularity. Um, in, you know, what, what do I choose to, uh, to read that I haven't read before? And uh, those last words are important. Uh, I spend a lot of time rereading. Uh, at every opportunity, I used to go through Dante's Divine Comedy uh, all the way through uh, in Italian with a struggle uh, in translation with the Italian text uh, nearby. Um, I try to go through that every few years. Uh, try to go through the Iliad and the Odyssey, each of them, um, every few years. Um, read, uh, reread the most important plays of ancient uh, Greek tragedy, um, Greek and, uh, and Roman comedy. Um, so uh, a lot of my reading is rereading, uh, or is reading of, of commentary or secondary uh, literature. Um, it is not all that often that I approach a, a brand new work uh, for analysis. Uh, it is likelier to be a play than anything else. Uh, it can be a play um, originally in English. Uh, it can be uh, a play in one of the languages that I read a bit. Um, I, I can work in something like 10 different languages, but I can work confidently uh, in, uh, in only about uh, three or four of them. Uh, and two of them are the classical ones. Uh, so when I uh, approach a new play, um, ideally, uh, I will, uh, and, and theater is, is my uh, interest in performing arts. Um, when uh, I see a new play before I can read it, um, I am eager to see the script um, and uh, do probably three different things uh, at once. One of them is the, uh, the comp lit comparative literature approach. How is this related to anything else? Uh, almost uh, how is this related to everything else uh, in the, uh, the history of drama? Uh, so there's the comparative literature angle. How, how does this, this fit in? Um, I am interested uh, in uh, how successful uh, the production I saw was. Uh, when I read the play, uh, do I uh, recognize what I saw uh, or as I read the play, uh, do I think that uh, the, uh, the director or the, uh, the, the principal actors uh, were, I wouldn't say wrong, uh, but missed opportunities uh, or took the play in a different direction than, than I would have done? And now here's, uh, here's my uh, arrogant uh, third uh, element of approach, uh, as I think the, uh, the author would have done. Uh, what, did the, uh, uh, what did the author intend? Now, it's a big issue in literary criticism, uh, whether uh, we can ever know the intention of an author. Even if the, intent, even if the author writes uh, essays about uh, uh, her or his play, uh, that doesn't mean that, uh, that when uh, the play was written, uh, the intention was there. Uh, in the Apology of Plato, uh, that Socrates' uh, defense speech before he was uh, condemned to death by the Athenians, uh, Socrates says that uh, he went around to all the wise people, uh, or the, the people who are called wise, uh, Sophos, uh, at, uh, at Athens, uh, and asked them uh, sometimes specific questions about their, uh, their art uh, or their, uh, their vocation. He would talk about uh, politics and justice with politicians. He would talk about beauty uh, with artists of different kinds. Uh, he would talk about uh, uh, practical uh, applications when he was uh, dealing with a craftsman. Well, uh, he said that um, uh, among the people he interrogated were poets. 
Uh, and uh, the most important poets at Athens were the tragedians. So Socrates probably did have some conversations with Sophocles or Euripides. Uh, if those guys weren't uh, too smart uh, to run away from Socrates, as soon as Socrates came, anyone who was really smart would move as quickly as possible uh, in the other direction because this happened in public space. And uh, Socrates would, uh, would track down uh, all of the reputed wise people. And among those were poets, and among those were surely the leading tragedians. Sophocles was regarded as the greatest, Euripides maybe as the smartest of, uh, of tragedians. And uh, without naming names, without naming Sophocles or Euripides or anyone else, uh, Socrates, according to Plato, said that when he did corner uh, one of the poets, uh, and uh, Socrates was well known for this kind of thing, uh, he's got somebody pretty much backed into a corner almost, although there are no corners in the marketplace, uh, but he's, he's got this person confronted and this person now can't uh, run away. Uh, and he's asking him some questions. A crowd would gather. Uh, a crowd would gather to see Socrates humiliate some uh, supposedly wise person by showing that he really wasn't all that wise. And Socrates says in the Apology that uh, uh, he would ask uh, the poets about uh, their work, uh, and they would try to explain their work. Uh, and uh, Socrates uh, said, uh, that uh, uh, he was never satisfied with their explanations. Uh, worse, he said that anybody in the, the crowd of, uh, of bystanders listening to this could have given a better explanation of, uh, of the, uh, the poem, the play, or whatever the, uh, the matter was. So intention is not, um, is not something that you can, uh, you can know for certain, and yet there are uh, indications uh, uh, in well, indications in novels, indications in other kinds of writing uh, of uh, what uh, the poet intended to convey. Um, now, some kinds of uh, some kinds of writing may be entirely for the author's own pleasure. Uh, his intention is to please himself, to satisfy himself uh, or herself. Uh, but uh, certainly, the uh, the old. Uh, plays that, uh, that uh, I study, enjoy, and teach, uh, they all have intention. I don't think there could be any question about that. Um, and uh, when I approach a new play, uh, I start from the, uh, the assumption that uh, the author intended uh, something beyond telling a story. Now, there's a very important uh, director uh, who uh, gave a wonderful little seminar for uh, for me and a few students that we brought, uh, whom we brought downtown to uh, to meet this uh, this fellow, um, and uh, he said that uh, that when he approaches a play, uh, he approaches it uh, as a storyteller. The play has a story to tell, and that's fundamental unless it's a postmodern play, and then it's hard to, uh, to figure out what's happening from, uh, from line to line. Uh, but if it's a conventional uh, drama that has a beginning, middle, and uh, maybe not a very satisfying end, uh, according to Aristotle's um, description of what a play is supposed to do, uh, beginning, middle, and an end that is conclusive. Uh, but it tells a story, uh, but it also has um, it has a lesson, or we can learn something from it. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Uh, we can learn something from it. Maybe not what the author intended. Uh, maybe the author himself or herself discovers, coming back to a writing of years ago, uh, uh, something that uh, uh, the, uh, the author uh, was not aware of <laughs> when, uh, when composing it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, uh, playwrights, I know, will do this. They'll come back to a play. They'll modify it because they uh, they found something in it that they wanted to make clear uh, that wasn't clear uh, in the uh, the first edition of the thing. It wasn't clear when it was performed on the stage. It was a play. Uh, it wasn't clear in its published form. Uh, and so you'll get uh, revised uh, edition uh, editions. There are a number of playwrights, uh, ancient, uh, 
Renaissance, late Renaissance humanists uh, and, and modern who are uh, famous for changing their place. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking to learn something, um, whether it's something that I believe, uh, but to learn what the message was. Maybe something that will, uh, will convince me, something that will change me. Uh, I don't know that I've ever read a play that has changed me, but uh, many a play I have read uh, uh, has, uh, has enriched me, my experience. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's more philosophical than history. That's what Aristotle says of, uh, of tragedy. It's more philosophical than history uh, because it can, it can teach things that, uh, that are distilled from human experience rather than a simple record of human experience that, uh, that history or journalism uh, conveys.